bus, <laughs> festivals. Many of us have accompanied her on these journeys. And if you look around, you'll see the world that Nicole and David have cultivated for themselves through their histories. And it's a beautiful thing to know that people love them so much, and so many people feel like part of our families, that they were willing to travel from near and far to be here on their special day. But I'm lucky, because I've been there since she was born. And as her sister, I've had the privilege to share more memories with her than pretty much anyone else on the planet. I remember when we were tiny, we spent a lot of time outside, where she loved playing with roly polies and chopping worms in half, because we thought that's how they multiplied. <laughs> we were wrong. Um, we wrote magazines with our cousins. We strung up string between our rooms and passed notes, and may have created a rather large hole in the plaster wall between our closets. Sorry, Mom. We were on Martha's Vineyard trips together, where we learned the lyrics to Tom Petty songs and had massive backyard barbecues. There were epic road trips to the Grand Canyon, Yosemite, all the while while listening on repeat to I Would Walk 500 Miles and The Best of Peter, Paul, and Mary. We still have Stu Ball flashbacks. In our 20s, I caught up with her in her grand thesis excursion via Greyhound bus and we ventured to piano bars at Universal Studios. We once taught a bunch of older men how to line dance in a bar called Yogi's and we managed to find each other at the Millennium Fish Show with no cell phone and only the magic of Sheila, her butterfly on a stick. <laughs> she was the maid of honor in my wedding, and when I had my first daughter, I gave Riley her middle name, Marie, and named Nicole as her godmother. And then I gave birth to Ella, and realized I had given birth to Minnie Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> we've gone swimming with manatees, we've explored Epcot, and impersonated characters from Star Wars at Redwood Field Days. And anyone who knows Nicole knows how special this day is. Nicole did it her way, but that is not what makes it special. Not the way you think. I mean, yes, the lights and the perfectly mismatched Martha Stewart's plates and the linens are stunning. The VW bus for the photos, the fields of flowers, even the mermaid hair and the flower headdresses are very Nicole. <laughs> But that's not it, because that would mean it was about one person. And the reason this wedding is so special is because it's Nicole and David. David, who moved to the farm in the middle of winter. <laughs> <You're an idiot. laughs> yeah, because you realized she was the one, and you braved negative 40 degrees for the one. David, who's become an intellectual hippie to join forces and made a, by the power of gray skull dynamic duo, who create prize-winning red day, red, yeah, Redwood Field Day floats, and laughter and memories. This wedding is special not because Nicole did it her way, but because she found someone who wanted to do it that way. She found a partner whose identity and beliefs are similar enough to her own that he wanted the celebration she did on this farm with this motley crew of characters that celebrate their life together. And years ago, I talked to Nicole about love. I've been married for how long? We've <laughs> been together for 23. And I was trying to explain to her that relationships shouldn't be hard. I was trying to express that when it's the right person, the one you love who loves you back unconditionally for being your wild, weirdly wonderful self, then it's easy. I mean, sure, there are curveballs externally, planning a giant wedding on your farm, but <laughs> the relationship should be easy. You should know what to say or do to make each other laugh. You should be able to have a conversation about philosophy or a simple one about what Netflix movie to watch. Jeff Goldblum, always the answer. <laughs> but you should want to spend time together and drive to cool places and explore and watch the Twilight Zone Marathon all day on New Year's Eve. And at the time, she didn't get it. But then she met David. Three weeks later, she brought him home to Thanksgiving, and I knew that this was the one. I'm pretty sure she did too, but I knew. She was herself around him. There was a banter to their conversations and a seamlessness to him blending into our family that was striking in its ease. This was confirmed at Christmas when he joined us for brunch and was able to hold his own against discussions of migrating to Canada, remember this is after the election, and the intellectual gymnastics associated with Bloody Marys, mimosas, and Caldwells. David could be dropped in a room and he could hang. And Nicole didn't need to babysit, and he, she didn't need to adjust who she was, and rather she blossomed and she laughed and she had these deep belly laughs that come from being content, and that I evolved into a weight. When they got engaged, I asked her if she remembered our conversation about love being easy, and she did, and she said, I get it now. I didn't get it before, but I get it now. 
because she found the right person. David, my new brother-in-law, is the right person. She will remember your heart when men are fairy tales in books written by rabbits. Tom Robbins in Still Life of Woodpecker says, the bottom line is that people are never perfect, but love can be. We waste time looking for the perfect lover instead of creating the perfect love. And he's right. No person is perfect, it's impossible. But the thing is, that imperfect is the beauty, and that's what you fall in love with. Beauty is, after all, in the eye of the beholder. And that makes the person perfect for you for, as a partner. And Nicole and David, you have found the perfect lover for yourselves. They compliment you, they make you happy, they make you better. And here's to many more years of creating the perfect love. I love you both. Now let's get pissed. <laughs> Another hand for Kristen. Great job.